In this video, we'll discuss Monte Carlo integration, specifically in the context of calculating molecular properties. So if we have n atoms, as we've been saying so often in this chapter, we have three n coordinates for our system. So then our energy would be a function of three n coordinates. So we discussed in a previous video on ensemble properties, how we would get the average energy of a system under certain approximations, under certain conditions, certain types of ensembles. So the average energy, E bar or E in brackets, if you preferred, would be an integral over those three n coordinates of what the energy is at that specific coordinate times the Boltzmann factor of that coordinate, e to the minus energy over Boltzmann factor times temperature. And then we would have that normalized by the partition function, the integral over all those coordinates again of e to the minus e to the r3n over kBT. So this is really just a weighted average where the energy of each position is weighted by its Boltzmann factor. So you have the value of the property at a given point is the e at that value. And then its probability is its Boltzmann factor divided by the partition function. And then we integrate over all coordinates to get the average weighted by their Boltzmann factors. Okay, so this integral, as we mentioned, is very hard to do typically. We cannot do it analytically except for very simple cases. So what we often do is solve it numerically by various uh, types of methods. Molecular dynamics is one method. Monte Carlo is another kind of method we could use. So in this we would say that the energy is approximately sum over n individual states of e to the minus energy of that state divided by kt divided by sum over i equals 1 to n e to the minus i over kt the partition function over those given states. Okay, so how are we going to go about picking what these states are? So we're going to just pick some discrete set of n, let's call this m, just so I don't confuse it with n. So I'm going to pick m individual states. How am I going to pick them? Well, what makes this a Monte Carlo simulation is they are all going to be random. So we're going to choose m random points for the sum. For sum has a u, sum. Okay, so this sounds like an extremely bad idea on the outset, but actually if we do it in a clever way and we pick an enough points, this will actually give us a very good answer, depending on how much tolerance we have for error. Okay, so the random points what that means in practice is that we are going to choose random values for each coordinate at each state. Okay, so if we have m points here, we have three n coordinates at each point. So for each of these m, we have to select n random configurations. So this is x1, y1, z1. We're going to pick a random value for every single one of them. And then we're going to do that for every single state until we're satisfied that we have enough states. Okay, so doing this would be the most naive way to do Monte Carlo. And for molecules, this is particularly a very bad idea to do it this way. Why is it a bad idea to do the naive Monte Carlo? Number one, it's very inefficient. So as I mentioned, there are three n coordinates. So it takes an enormous number of points, as we said, to do a grid for this. If we had to do 100 points in every dimension, that would be 100 to the 3 n. So already for 100 atoms, that would be 100 to the 300 power. That's impossible. You know, we can't do more than, you know, however many, however many evaluations that we end up doing. You know, typically, 10 to the 15, 10 to the 16, that would, that would be an enormous number. So 10 to the 300 is not happening. All right, so it's very inefficient because there's a very large configuration space. Um, it's also in a, so that's one reason I'll note. So large number of configurations, meaning our number of M 
that we would have to choose is an, would be enormous. It's inefficient for another reason because most structures don't contribute. If you imagine your temperature at 300 Kelvin, if you have a bond that takes 500 kilojoules of energy to dissociate, you know, that bond is not going to dissociate at 300 Kelvin. You know, the, the, part, the Boltzmann factor for it dissociating is enormously small. So anything where that bond is stretched to more than you know, twice its original length, that's not going to happen. And most of the coordinates have those two atoms being not that close to each other. So there's a whole, a lo if there's a chemical bond, that's a lot of the coordinate space we can already reject. And typically in molecules, there are lots of bonds. There are lots of bond angles, lots of torsions. So just the structure of molecules themselves mean that most structures don't contribute because they're very high in energy. So this, as I said, is that their probability is very close to zero because their energy is much, much greater than KT. So this Boltzmann factor here is E over KT. KT at 300 Kelvin is about 0.6 kilocalories per mole. So anything above you know, 10 KT, 15 KT, 20 KT is basically unobserved in the, in the Boltzmann factor there. Okay, so basically we need a better algorithm which is going to be an improvement on that. Heat improvement. And that's what we'll discuss in the next video is Metropolis Monte Carlo, which is an improvement on naive Monte Carlo for molecular systems. Okay, but what's going on with this circle up here? So this circle is a demonstration of how Monte Carlo would work in general. And it's in a case where Monte Carlo does actually work quite well because most of these structures do contribute. Okay, let's imagine we want to calculate the value of pi. So what is the area of this circle? So I said that each of these dimensions here is 2. There's 2 in the x dimension, 2 in the y dimension. So r equals 1. But the area of a circle, area of circle is equal to pi r squared. And this circle is inscribed in a square. What's the area of the square? Well, each dimension is 2, but we could say that the length of the side here is 2r. So the area of the square here is going to be 2r squared which is 4r squared for this here. Okay, so what is the ratio of these two areas? So area of the circle over area of the square equals pi over 4, which is around you know, 0 0.78. So if we randomly choose points here inside this square, 78% of them are going to be inside the circle, and about 22% are going to be outside. But if we didn't know the value of pi to begin with, how could we could do that? Well, we could choose a bunch of random points, as I've indicated here by these blue dots. So if we choose a bunch of random points and then compute the fraction of them that are inside the circle, that should be around this 0 0.78. And then if we multiply that times pi, then that sh if we multiply that times 4, then that should be about pi. So what we can say here is that we can say that the value of pi is approximately four times the percent that are inside the circle. So the, the probability of being inside the circle, the a, a circle over a square, is equal to, pi is equal to four times that value. So if you do the simulation and you do 100 points, you probably won't get a very good value. If you do 1,000 points, you'll probably get an okay value. If you do 10,000 points, you start to get a pretty good answer here. You'll probably be less than 1% error. If you do 100,000 points, you'll pretty much nail that to the third or the fourth digit on pi. So the point there is that even though Monte Carlo, even though it's random for an individual choice, over a large number, it starts to average out such that over a very large number, you get the right answer. So it just works out that in practice, that the limit as m goes to infinity of this value here of 4 times that probability, p in, is equal to pi. Any finite number, it'll have some error. Some will be above, some will be below. But over a large number in the limit of going to infinity, you'll get pi. Similarly, for molecular properties, if we did an infinite number of structures randomly chosen, we would get the exact energy. But with some finite value, which is large enough, our energy will be pretty good. 
but this is hard for molecular systems in general since most structures don't contribute, so we need a clever way to avoid structures which don't contribute hardly at all.